Before I talk about this new manga series that came out yesterday called Wild Strawberry, I just need to say something, because I always, when I talk about new manga, I bring bad mojo to it. And I know it's kind of like a meme within our community. I talk about, you know, like I curse a series when I talk about it and it's going to potentially get axed. But every time I kind of do talk about something that's like related to Shonen Jump, Young Jump, Jump Square, all that type of stuff... Turns out a series eventually just something goes haywire. Something completely goes haywire and the series just either goes on break or it gets cancelled, whatever. And legitimately, I am fearful to get into this story because of that. Because I feel like I might bring bad mojo to it. And you're probably wondering, okay Chibi, then why are you making a video on this if you don't want to bring bad mojo to a series that legitimately is fascinating? Well... I mean, I want to talk about it because I like it. I really like this first chapter, but I also want to kind of break that cycle and just be like, yeah, see, I don't curse a series when I talk about it. So that's uh, that's my point of view on the matter. But um, let's let's talk about, you know, Wild Strawberry Chapter 1. And um, I want to point out that uh, besides, obviously, this artwork, the author that is working on this called Iri uh, Yonemoto, probably butchered their name, they are a brand new author slash artist. There is no prior work, as you can see here if you look them up, and this is their first thing they've ever worked on. Now, to be fair, this could be a pen name. For instance, you know, Ari, you know, Yonemoto could be a pen name hiding, like, the actual real name of the individual. We There's a lot of offers and light novel offers, etc., that do this. So there is definitely a possibility that this individual could have worked on things prior, but just changed their name or something. So that is food for thought. But I'm just going to go with the information we have, at least right now, because I don't know if it's a pen name. This seems to be the offer's first work. And overall, looking at just, like, the level of detail that the first chapter gave, is just impressive. Like, I, I just, I want to talk about from a perspective of character design and landscape design. Because there's a lot of, like, situations within manga to where an author is, you know, there's always these traits and stuff that, you know, stand out that they're really good at and they lack in other areas. Like, sometimes it could be background art, sometimes it could be maybe character expression or just character design and clothing design. There's always things you could probably notice that, you know, maybe an artist kind of lacks at, especially when they start. They're brand new. And it's seems like whoever, you know, Ari Yonemoto is, has really done a lot with their craft. They have spent a long time really just making their art as good as they can, and it is a really unique art style. I love the line work, and I just, I love the vibe that this color page gives me. It, honestly, when I first laid eyes upon this, like, if you would have crossed out Wild Strawberry here, and don't have that title here, don't have the stuff on the bottom, I would assume, like, this was a near automata, like, color page or something. That, that that would be my first impressions. Like, if anyone's played Nier, and, like, you played the game, like, this whole cityscape looks like that. And I do wonder, in some degree, if the offer, at least when they were drawing this color page, was inspired by Nier to a degree, at least the, the landscape, you know, to make this. I, I don't know. Which, speaking of artwork, I do want to point something out. When I first laid eyes upon this color page when I opened up this chapter... I was just like, wow, okay, this reminds me of something. And I was thinking about it for a second, and instantly, it reminded me of this. Tokyo Ghoul. It reminded me of the Kagane. Of, you know, like, just different ghouls and stuff. Like, you know, Toka, or you can see Heisei here. When, like, the Kagane just breaks out of their body, kind of like a butterfly or an explosion or something. It's a very beautiful effect that Ashita Sui did throughout Tokyo Ghoul. And when I looked at Wild Strawberry, this chapter, obviously stuff like wings and stuff has been done in a lot of manga. But I just feel like the way the pose is, the way the back is, it reminds me just so much of Tokyo Ghoul. And I don't know if this artist was theoretically inspired by Tokyo Ghoul or Ashita Sui to a degree. Or maybe it's just, uh, you know, I'm stretching, I'm, I'm stretching things. But the point of the matter is, is that when I'm reminded of Tokyo Ghoul instantly when I start a series, you already got me hooked. I want to see where it's going to go. I want to read the first chapter and see if I want to continue reading the series. So this instantly won me over as soon as I saw the color page. Now, we got to talk about the actual story. What is Wild Strawberry? I mean, quite a interesting name, honestly, when you think about it. The title, Wild Strawberry. I mean, it, when you think about what has been, like, presented in, like, um, the chapter... We, it's obviously associated with plants, because you can see, like, plants are growing out of this female character's back. You look at her eye, she has, like, a petal, uh, you know, kind of growing out of her eyelid. It's clear that she's, like, a plant, and she's not human. But it's like, um, what's the wild strawberry have to do with it? Now, I don't know if this is, like, a strawberry plant or anything, but, uh... 
it probably will play a role in the future, I I'm assuming. But anyways, the plot of the story is kind of set in a post-apocalyptic area, er, or era, and it's actually not exactly what you think it is, where humanity's pushed into the brink and they're dead. Because normally when you get, like, stories like this where, you know, humanity is, you know, in a post-apocalyptic, they're scattered, there's barely anyone alive, you know, they're at the brink, these monsters are pushing in on them, you would assume that, you know, oh, crap, you know, they're all gonna die soon or something. And that's actually not the case. This story has a very unique direction with it because it starts off with letting us know there is a vaccine. It literally says right here, there is a vaccine to stop the plants from growing within your body and as soon as i saw that i was like okay that's pretty interesting because usually like in these type of storylines like when you're you know you're reading post-apocalyptic especially when you have people that get infected by stuff it's just like it takes like the entire series to really find a cure that, that's usually what it is uh, or the main male character is different and is immune to it or something that's what you would think and that we, we've seen this often in a lot of storytelling, and the fact that there's already a cure that people got a hold of makes me very happy to see. So we're not going to spend the entire story trying to figure out a cure for people to get rid of it. It's already out there. Just It's only accessible to those that are rich or in a very nice city, etc. Not necessarily nobility, just, you know, people that are kind of well off in a more secure city. So it's fascinating to see that. But another thing is that the story also has a very Chainsaw Man-like feel to it. This moment right here. This instantly reminded me of the moment with Denji and Puchita. If anyone remembers when, you know, Puchita became Denji's heart, what happens here is that the sister was, you know, she has a plant growing inside of her, and it obviously tries to protect her, tries to protect him, and instantly, as, you know, he's literally dying on the ground because he tried to intervene with these task force, you know, trying to kill his, like, sister, not biological sister, but, like, he classifies as his sister, um, pretty much, you know, they kill him. And as he's dying and all that, she protects him by, you know, restraining everyone and then enters inside of his body, which I'm assuming to keep him alive. And so in this moment, it's like, oh, so this is kind of like the whole, you know, Puchita stuff with Chainsaw Man. And this instantly made me start thinking about the evolution of just the inner demon and beast. Because I, I didn't think about it, but you go back like 10, 15 years ago, maybe even earlier, but, uh, you go back, you know, every manga series, especially if it was Battle Shonen, it needed to have a character with an inner demon or an alter ego. Something needed to be evil inside of them, so to speak, that causes havoc and eventually could cause them a rage power up to where, like, they can kill people or whatever. You know, th this is an element of Fiend, and you can still see this in today's current stuff, but, you know, it is, you know, kind of been slowly transitioned into this type of theme to where you have, like, a good entity that obviously is supposed to be evil becomes good and protects the person they care about, like for instance, Puchita. And I think that I like this trope of how it's kind of evolved within, you know, over the years, and seeing how it's not necessarily someone or an entity that wants to kill him, it just, it wants to protect him. It doesn't want to work against him, so to speak. So I do like that. I like that element a lot. Now, another thing I do want to mention is that the artwork of this series is just, it is beautiful. Like, I, I feel like this alone just really just like, it really speaks for itself. I really am just impressed by just the colors to the way the flowers are drawn. It is just truly beautiful looking. And it's very reminiscent of Hell's Paradise. Like, if you uh, have watched Hell's Paradise or read even the chapters or even seen panels of the manga, it really does kind of look like that. I feel like this offer was heavily inspired by multiple different manga. Like, for instance, probably Chainsaw Man to a degree, probably inspired by Attack on Titan, inspired by Tokyo Ghoul, and obviously just, like, different manga here and there you can kind of reference to throughout this chapter. I really do think that it's very special. And this series is interesting. It's a really good first chapter. I really like the artwork and all that. I like where the story is going because it has a lot of potential to be good. And since it's technically a new offer, I'm curious to see how their work is going to turn out because, you know, I would like to see just an outright banger, something that really just blows everyone away. But I guess I want to wrap up the series here. I just, I wanted to talk about Wild Strawberry because I really like the first chapter. I really hope that the series doesn't get axed or canceled. I just, I wanted to talk about it. But be safe, stay healthy, Chibi out.